Now that we have seen so many properties of the Lebesgue measure and Lebesgue measurable sets, it's a good time to look back at what we are trying to do and recall where we started off from. So let me recall our original goals. So we were guided by some geometric intuition which our uh, measures were expected to satisfy. The first one was finite additivity finite additivity property and the second one was invariance under translations translations rotations and reflections so we had these two uh, main geometric intuitions in mind when we were trying to define what should be a concept of a measure for arbitrary subsets of Rd. But the Banach-Tarski paradox, Banach-Tarski paradox forced us to look at, to uh, separate the classes of subsets of Rd into uh, two classes subsets of Rd were divided into two classes, measurable and non-measurable because the Banach-Tarski paradox establishes the existence uh, via the axiom of choice, the existence of uh, subsets of Rd which fail to uh, have finite additivity. If, if uh, two is assumed then one fails. So we have to uh, divide uh, the subsets of Rd into two classes. The measurable ones were supposed to satisfy satisfy 1 and 2 and the non-measurable ones may not satisfy 1 and 2. So we started off with the concept of a Jordan measure which was defined via the volume of uh, boxes and then we gradually increased our uh, classes of uh, subsets of Rd into in consideration from boxes to finite union of boxes and then to Jordan measurable sets. But we still felt that even though the Jordan measure uh, respected finite additivity and invariance under translations, rotations and reflections for Jordan measurable sets. But still it was not closed under countable unions and countable intersections and left out many um, important subsets of Rd such as open sets uh, which were not Jordan measurable. So we went further. So the drawback for Jordan measurable measure and Jordan measurable subsets was that it was not a sufficiently large enough class, sufficiently large enough class of subsets. So in particular open sets may not be Jordan measurable. So, since we wanted to have uh, this connection with the topology, underlying topology of the Euclidean space Rd, we wanted to have at least the open subsets of Rd should be measurable in a suitable notion of measure. So, this is why we defined the notion of a Lebesgue outer measure, outer measure and Lebesgue measurability. Lebesgue measurability and we proved various properties such as finite and countable additivity, countable additivity for Lebesgue measurable sets and we still haven't proved though that 
Lebig measurable sets, the Lebig measure for uh, Lebig measurable sets is invariant under translations, rotations, and reflections. So, we have proved this and of course, this is a large class of subsets of R, Rd, large class of subsets of Rd that includes all open sets. So, this we have also seen, but we have not seen yet the second uh, property which is invariance under translations, rotations and reflections. And so, this was uh, one of our main uh, geometric intuitions for the uh, properties of the measures that we wanted. So, in this lecture we will see this property uh, of invariance of the Lebesgue measure under translations, rotations and reflections. So, this is the theorem that we want to prove which is the Lebesgue measurability under linear transformations of R d. This kind of result we have already seen for the Jordan measure and this theorem uh, is for the Lebesgue measure. So, it says that the first part says that if E is Lebesgue measurable and X is a vector in R d, then the translated set E plus X is also Lebesgue measurable and the Lebesgue measure of the translated set is the same as the uh, Lebesgue measure of the original set. And the second part says that if E is Lebesgue measurable and L is a linear transformation of R d, then the image of E under L is a Lebesgue measurable set and the measure transforms as we would expect which is it uh, is the is a multiple of the measure of E and the multiple is given by the modulus of the determinant of L. So, in this way this is an extension of um, the transformation for Jordan measurable sets and uh, this shows also that uh, from the second part that this is uh, m m of L e is equal to m of e if L is a translation is a rotation translation we have already seen is a rotation or a or a reflection because if L is a rotation or a reflection then it is an orthogonal matrix and an orthogonal matrix has determinant 1. So, we have uh, m L e equals m e. Of course, the first part is translation invariance and the second part is rotation invariance and reflection invariance. So, in this way we have uh, we would have proved the geometric intuition that we started off with which is the measure should satisfy this invariance under uh, translations, rotations and reflections and it should satisfy finite subadditivity is also. Since we have already seen countable additivity, uh, we only have to prove this uh, invariance under translations, rotations and reflections. So, let us see how this is proved. So, to prove this, so let us uh, write first what we want uh, what we are going to use to prove this to prove both 1 and 2 we will use the following lemma which gives an another equivalent characterization for Lebesgue measurability which is that uh, E is Lebesgue measurable subset of R d if and only if for any epsilon greater than 0 there exists a closed subset closed set f and an open set u which contains e such that the measure of u minus f is less than or equal to epsilon. So, 
uh, one can just use the inner approximation by closed sets and outer approximation by open sets to prove uh, this equivalence that E is Lebesgue measurable if and only if this condition holds. So, let us see how we use this lemma to prove the first part. Uh, so, first we will show that to show that if E is Lebesgue measurable then E plus x is also Lebesgue measurable. So, using the lemma using the lemma for any epsilon greater than 0 we choose uh, u which contains E and is open and f which is a subset of E and is closed such that the measure of u minus f is less than or equal to epsilon. <coughs> now, note that note that u open is equivalent to saying that u plus x is open and u closed or rather f closed closed is equivalent to saying that f plus x is closed. <coughs> this is because the reason is that uh, the translation map tau x from R d to R d which takes y to y plus x is a continuous bijection continuous bijection. So, it is a homeomorphism of R d. So, <coughs> this means that it takes open sets to open sets and closed sets to closed sets and so we have that if u is open it is equivalent to saying that u plus x is open and if f is closed then f plus x is closed and vice versa. Note also that f plus x is a subset of e plus x is a subset of u plus x and this is an open set and this is a closed set. So, it suffices to show suffices to show that the measure of u plus x minus f plus x is less than or equal to epsilon. So, for this I claim two things first is that the measure of u plus x uh, well actually u plus x minus f plus x is equal to u minus f plus x which implies that the measure of u plus x minus f plus x is equal to the measure of u minus f plus x and the second is that <coughs> if v is an arbitrary subset is an arbitrary uh, well arbitrary open subset arbitrary open subset then m of v plus x is equal to m of v. <coughs> so, um, with these two things we can immediately conclude. So, assuming that this claims assuming the claims above we have that the measure of u plus x minus f plus x is equal to the measure of u minus f plus x and now note that this is an open set because u is open and the complement of f which is closed is open. So, it is an intersection of two open sets therefore, it is open. So, by 2 so this is by for first part the second part then shows that this is simply m of u minus f and this is less than or equal to epsilon. So, we are done. So, <coughs> we just have to show the claims. 
So the first part is very easy. It's just a set theoretic argument. So I leave it as an exercise. So I will prove only the second part. So proof of 2. So since V is open, it is in, we can write, we can write V as a countable union of boxes <coughs> B i uh, collection. So, B i n equal to i equal to 1 to infinity, a collection of almost disjoint closed boxes, closed boxes in R d. So, we have shown this we have uh, used this lemma before. <coughs> I didn't prove it, but I referred to uh, Terence Tao's book for a proof that any open set is a countable union of almost disjoint closed uh, boxes, in fact, cubes in Rd. So, this implies that M of V is the sum of MBI i equal to 1 to infinity. Now, note that if V can be written as the union of B i's, then uh, V is equal to is the union of these B i's. This implies that <coughs> V plus x is then the union of the sets B i plus x i equal to 1 to infinity and note that b i plus x i equal to 1 to infinity is also a collection of almost disjoint closed boxes in R d. And we already know that the translation invariance uh, holds for boxes. So, we have the measure of m m of v plus x is equal to the sum b i plus x i equal to 1 to infinity. This is nothing but i equal to 1 to infinity m b i because b i's are elementary and we have shown that <coughs> translation invariance holds for elementary sets even Jordan measurable sets. So, we get m v on the right hand side. So, m v plus x is equal to mv for any open set v. So, this proves the our uh, second claim and since I have already left the first as an exercise, then it shows that um, e plus x is Lebesgue measurable. Now, we still have to show that e plus x to show that the measure of E plus X is equal to the measure of E. So, first suppose to show this, first suppose that the measure of E is finite. Okay. Then uh, there exists an open set, open set uh, U containing E such that <coughs> measure of U is less than or equal to measure of E plus epsilon. So, I am going to fix fix epsilon greater than 0 <coughs> and then if uh, measure of E is finite then you can find an open set containing E such that the measure of U is bounded above by measure of E plus epsilon. Now, E plus X is contained in u plus x and this is an open set. So, the measure of e plus x, so I am writing measure because we have already shown that uh, I am writing m instead of m star because I have already shown that e plus x is Lebesgue measurable. So, this is less than or equal to m u plus x by monotonicity and this is equal to <coughs> m u by the uh, translation invariance for open subsets that we have proved 
and this is less than or equal to m e plus epsilon for any arbitrary epsilon this implies that m e plus x is less than or equal to m e since epsilon was arbitrary <coughs> now this holds for any lebesgue measurable set e and any vector x so i am going to put e prime as e plus x and x prime as minus x so this implies that measure of e prime plus x prime is less than or equal to measure of e prime by what we have just shown but e prime plus x prime is nothing but e because it is e plus x minus x so the left hand side is just e and the right hand side is e plus x so we have shown that um, m e plus x is less than or equal to m e so this is the first inequality and the second inequality is the reverse one so this concludes the proof that m e equals so let me write it here m e equals m e plus x now let's come to the second part part 2 which is the which is a more uh, interesting if you want that if l is a linear transformation is a linear transformation then uh, e being lebesgue measurable implies that l e is lebesgue measurable belongs to l r d and the measure of l e is precisely modulus of the determinant times m e where the equality holds in the extended real number so both sides can be uh, plus infinity as well <coughs> nevertheless this equality holds so let's see the proof for this statement uh, so we have to start uh, with the case when the rank of l is strictly less than the dimension d uh, on which it is defined so we expect that the image will uh, lie in a uh, hyperplane of uh, strictly of dimension strictly less than d and so it should have measure 0 just as in the case of a uh, of the jordan uh, measure uh, but for this for this uh, to be proven we need the following lemma uh, to show that uh, a hyperplane any hyperplane hyperplane h belongs to the class of lebesgue measurable sets and the measure is zero uh, so we already know that bounded segments of hyperplanes are uh, are jordan measurable and they have jordan measure zero so if uh, we can write the hyperplane as a countable union of disjoint bounded segments uh, of hyperplanes then the resulting thing will be lebesgue measurable and the measure will still be zero because each component will have measure zero uh, so but we still need to prove that if a bounded segment is jordan measurable then it is lebesgue measurable because the two things are have different definitions so we still haven't shown this lemma uh, that <coughs> this is another lemma in uh, it's uh, interesting in its own right that every any jordan measurable subset jordan measurable set e is lebesgue measurable so let me write this is lemma 1 and this is lemma 2 so first 
let's see how lemma 2 implies lemma 1 so <clears throat> this is because any bounded segment bounded segment meaning a, a subset of the hyperplane which is bounded so i'm calling this a bounded segment of a hyperplane h is jordan measurable so this we have proved before so this implies that uh, let me denote the bounded segment as uh, c this implies that c is lebesgue measurable and then we can write h as the union of h intersection the uh, closed wall of uh, with center 0 and radius n n equal to 1 to infinity so this is now a countable the each each one is lebesgue measurable because it is jordan measurable lebesgue measurable and so this implies that h is lebesgue measurable and so the measure of h is bounded above by the measure of these bounded segments n equal to 1 to infinity uh, and because it is jordan measurable we have seen that the outer lebesgue outer measure coincides with the jordan measure for lebesgue measurable sets so it implies that this is zero for each n and so this is zero and therefore the measure of h itself is zero so lemma 2 implies lemma 1 so let's try to show that uh, any jordan measurable set is lebesgue measurable and i should add here and uh, the lebesgue measure me is equal to the so let me write lebesgue because we are using uh, both uh, for both notations we are using m so so on the left hand side we have the lebesgue measure which is by definition the restriction of the lebesgue outer measure to lebesgue measurable sets and on the right hand side we have the jordan measure so we have shown that the lebesgue outer measure coincides with the Lebe uh, jordan measure for jordan measurable sets so any jordan measurable set is lebesgue measurable and of course the measures do coincide so let's see how to prove lemma 2 so proof of lemma 2 this is quite easy uh, remember that e is jordan measurable has a has the following equivalent characterization for epsilon greater than 0 there exists elementary sets a and b such that a is a subset of e is a subset of b and the measure the elementary measure of b minus a is less than or equal to epsilon so <clears throat> now we are going to show that e is lebesgue measurable to show e is lebesgue measurable so we will again use the characterization uh, that we have just used which is that for any epsilon greater than 0 there exists a closed subset um, f of e and an open subset uh, u of e such that the measure of u minus f is less than or equal to epsilon so i am going to produce u and f by modifying a and b so modify a to get a closed elementary set f says that the measure of f is greater than or equal to the measure of a minus epsilon 
So when we were trying to show uh, countable uh, additivity, we have used this fact that we can have control over the volume of the elementary sets um, so that we can get closed and open sets uh, respectively. So here we have taken a closed elementary subset f of a such that this is true and then modify b to get an open subset, open elementary subset u containing uh, b such that the measure of uh, u is less than or equal to measure of b plus epsilon. So, <coughs> note that all these measures are uh, that we have here are finite because E is Jordan measurable. So, by definition it is bounded and so all these measures are in fact finite. And so, uh, here we can immediately get that m of u minus f is equal to m u minus m f because this is finite things and this is less than or equal to m b plus epsilon minus m a minus epsilon which is equal to m of b minus a plus 2 epsilon and this is less than or equal to 3 epsilon. So, in fact, we have shown that this is less than or equal to 3 epsilon in the uh, criteria for Lebesgue measurability which is still fine because it is still an arbitrary, cons uh, arbitrary number 3 epsilon. So, E is Lebesgue measurable. So, now going back to uh, the linear transformation L, if L has rank less than strictly less than d then the image of l uh, is a subset of a some hyperplane is a subset of some hyperplane h which implies that uh, L e um, the outer measure of L e is less than or equal to the outer measure which is the Lebesgue measure of the hyperplane H and this is 0 as we have shown. So, this implies that the outer measure of L e is in fact 0 which implies that L e is Lebesgue measurable. measurable as well as the fact that m of le is equal to modulus of the determinant of l times m e because this is precisely 0. So, for the case when uh, the rank is strictly less than d this is fine. 